Okay, so back to the traditional way of doing news of the week, which is one news of the week episode per week one video where i will be talking about all the news that has happened in the past week in mls so let's us begin with first news is that tfc has officially signed alejandro pizzullo and this of course happened yesterday and after just all the talks of whether or not if tfc is gonna get alejandro pizzullo whether if this deal is gonna went through it finally did yesterday now Prisulo will not be joining tfc until the end of the belgium league season apparently uh his his club gank does not really want to let him go until at least at the end of the regular season and i believe the re the end of the regular season in the belgium league is right about the end of march so tfc will not have him for the first couple of games but at least they're going to have him sooner than what they thought they would get him. Um, there was a lot of talk about how there was they might have to wait till summer before they can get Prisillo into the club. But now they have finally they are able to get the deal done and get him a little bit sooner. And at least this is just a baby step in terms of the rebuilding and in terms of the players that TFC needs to replace. After what they they lost during this offseason. Uh, obviously, Puzzolo is going to be the Victor Vasquez replacement. Now, they're going to have to see and find a replacement for J Sebastian Javinko. Which, I'm not quite sure they're going to be that desperate yet. Because, you know, with Josie Altador, uh, which I also forgot to put this on the board. But, he actually now signed a three-year extension deal. Um, maybe they might think about... About delaying the fact that you know since now we we got out the door for three more years maybe he's gonna be kind of like the Javinko type of player although one thing that I am a little concerned about that deal is you don't know if Josie out is going to be like he's still very good but is he gonna be good in like a year or two since now Josie has turned 30 years old and kind of are approaching the wrong end of 30 years old when you're a striker and the fact that Josie Altidore is very injury prone and if he's out then you have nobody going forward on the attacking end and in that striker position that Javinko used to play um, but next up uh, FC Cincinnati have added Kenny Saif on loan from uh, Andelect and you know this is something that I've been always talked about Cincinnati of how the attack still looks very weak and it's shown in that first game of the season and that they really have a big hole in terms of central attacking mid. Well, looks like they have finally fixed it with Kenny Siev and I'm not quite sure if he could be the answer because he didn't really look that good with Andelec these past couple of season but still at least they got a big name you know he's a u.s international albeit he kind of you know he he used to to could be considered maybe the 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 player that can be playing in that central attacking mid for our future u.s men's national team yeah that is probably not the case anymore but he could still be if he does well with fc cincinnati and like i said this is something that fc cincinnati has desperately needed which is they need a number 10 they signed so many midfield and so many center backs that they just haven't had anything on the attack and if there is something that that fc cincinnati has add on the attack i'm pretty sure their fans are absolutely ecstatic about even if it's not really a massive kind of signing um but next up, the Union. So they added midfielder Jamaro Montero from FC uh, Mets, uh, who is currently playing in Liga, the second division of Liga, so Liga 2. Um, and they actually signed him on a four-month loan with an option to buy, and that's kind of a bit of a weird deal, you know, just signing him for a four-month loan, meaning that his loan doesn't actually expire before the end of the season. And it's very rare that you see MOS team decide to loan a player, but they don't loan it all the way to the end of the season. Now, there is an option to buy in this loan deal. So if Montero does well with this team, then maybe the union is going to buy, buy him. And I wonder if Jim 
Mauro M Montero is going to play in the role that Madunian basically is playing right now. Because Madunian, he did not look good against TFC. And you wonder what the Union may maybe think about putting... They decided to add a midfielder, not just because of depth, but also maybe replacing Madunian. You know, Madunian was good last year, so I I know he had that bad game against TFC, but is that enough to say that he should be benched and Montero should just step in and hopefully he does very well? You know, I don't know much about this guy, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what the Union would do with that. Um, next up, the Galaxy. They are looking to acquire another center back. This time, they're looking for Adiel Remy. And, you know, for the Galaxy, they are just so desperate right now to, to go and find center back and, the def and focus on the defensive area because they still have a lot of problem in that area. And it seemed like after what we saw in that game against the Chicago Fire and the goal that they conceded in that game it's clear that their defense is still not fixed although you know it was quite ironic that that goal that they conceded that bad back pass that led to the fire goal was committed by their new signing Diego Palunta who was supposed to short up this defense but you know at the Remy they said that he was part of the French national team that won the World Cup he didn't start any game with the French national team he was on the roster and, you know, he's, he's roughly, I think, about 33 years old. So he's kind of a pretty old center back, but it's a very experienced kind of center back. And he's coming from Marseille, which is the same club that um, Roman Alessandrini used to come from. And that, of course, worked out pretty well for the Galaxy. So, yeah, and this is not going to be a DP signing, just to let you guys know, because they already have free DP. And by the way, the Galaxy also have waived uh, Giovanni Dos Santos and they have finally figured out that that DP situation, although I kind of mentioned it doing the preview, so that, that's why I didn't really add it on the board here. Um, but next up, uh, Jordan Morris has won the Player of the Week award and, you know, that it, it was pretty obvious that Jordan Morris was going to win the Player of of the week of war. I mean, a guy that hasn't played for two years in MLS, well, in a competitive MLS match, and then comes back instantly, score two goals. I mean, that is just, that is inc incredible, and he is well on his way of maybe winning the pl the comeback player of the year, even though technically it's still so early to say that he is going to be the prime candidate. But knowing what he just did, in this game it it seemed like maybe he could be getting back to his rookie form where he scored a ton of goals in his rookie form um but yeah next up nick romano has has decided that he is going to be retiring at the end of the year so alongside with tim howard um nick romano is the the latest u.s legendary goalkeeper that that decided to hang up his boots and you know I haven't heard a lot about Romano eventually is going to retire or not but it feels like he kind of think that this is probably the year and you know he to be honest he is getting very old I think he's approaching 40 years old right now which right around that time that's when most goalkeeper is started to think about uh, retiring and hang up their boots and it's not like Romano hasn't really kind of like he's he's not like Tim Howard where he's completely washed up and it's clear that maybe he can retire maybe Romano could have gone a couple more years but he decided that this is finally the year that he is going to retire and I'm pretty sure that Romano is definitely going to be you know we talked about how a couple of days ago of how David Beckham and the Galaxy reveal his statue there. Yeah, RSL is going to build a Nick Romano statue pretty soon. Because what he has done with RSL is just incredible. Like the, the, the longevity of the time that he was with RSL. And what he did with this team. Winning an MLS Cup for them back in 2009. Um, that was just amazing. And there is no doubt he is 
definitely deserve a statue. Um, but next up, uh, Inter Miami, they have released footage of a new training facility at Lockhart Stadium. Um, if you guys don't know where Lockhart Stadium is, it's actually in Fort Lauderdale, and it's a stadium that the original Miami team, Miami Fusion, actually used to play there. And if you actually look online and search up Lockhart Stadium, yeah, it looked like the stadium just got abandoned. Because the the fact that that stadium is just overgrown on the pitch and it looks really kind of... It almost felt like it's, it's kind of like one of those World Cup stadium that is just kind of rotting away. That's what Lockhart Stadium is. But Inter Miami said that they're thinking about about rebuilding the stadium and even provide like a training facility around that area. Um, they haven't said that whether or not are they going to play at Lockhart Stadium for just a bit before they built their new stadium near downtown Miami. Um, but they do say that they are going to put a USL team that is going to be at Lockhart Stadium, and that you know that is their main plan with. The, Stadium and the rendering of Lockhart Stadium, it looked much bigger than the original one. So I wonder, are they going like if they're gonna put a USL team at Lockhart Stadium and the the footage and the rendering of that stadium that looks really big for a USL team. That looked like a twenty five thousand seat stadium, which you know for a USL team, not a lot of USL team play in twenty five thousand seat stadium. That's like an MOS seat capacity kind of stadium so you know i don't know if those rendering is going to come true but obviously the main focus of this story is going to be the new training facility around it and it looked absolutely gorgeous um but next up uh the seattle sounders seeks for a stronger start to mls cup hun and the reason why i put that headline in there is that i'm gonna once again beat the dead horse and say that yeah we'll see we'll see if the sounders can actually get off to a good start or if this is just them saying yep we promise you that we are going to get off to a good start and that we're not going to start our season in july and make a crazy resurgence at the end of the season or at in the second half of the season and then finally sporting kc think that they could potentially be the first mosi to win ccl which you know that wouldn't be a a big surprise if that can't happen because you know when you look at Sporting KC, they certainly have the most favorable uh, game in terms of all the other MLS team that is playing right now. You know, I think all the rest of the MLS team is fa facing Liga MX team, and Sporting KC is facing a a Panamanian team who did beat TFC. Just to let you know, so I wouldn't say Sporting KC should just think that Independiente is just just gonna literally they're gonna literally just roll over them and that it's gonna be super easy to move on into the semifinal. no this independent team is gonna fight and they're gonna scratch and you know for sporting kc knowing the fact that they didn't make any changes in that lefc game yeah i don't know like and they're, they're it's not like this this game tomorrow is gonna be at kansas city it's gonna be down in in Panama City so yeah you know either if Peter Vermees is probably gonna go with a strong strong uh, starting 11 that play in LAFC game which I think that's kind of crazy because you know those guys are probably very tired and just kind of absolutely exhausted of what what happened on that Sunday game where it was very very physical I mean both team almost like they were or at war with each other with so many of those bad sliding challenges. So I, I don't know if Peter Vermees is going to go with, with the same starting 11. And I think he, it will be, I don't think it will be a great decision if he does decided to go with the same starting 11 in that game, considering the fact that the team is completely worn out from that LAFC game. But like I said, with Sporting KC, you know. Um, if they do advance to the semifinal, they get to play either Atlanta versus Monterey. And, you know, let's say that maybe Atlanta can beat Monterey. Then we can have an all-MOS team kind of affair. And I think in that case, 
you know, Sporting KC, maybe they could definitely move on into the final. And I definitely see this team, especially of how Atlanta has been in the first part of of the or in the first game of the season and how they look in CCL. Yeah, Sporting KC definitely look like like a little bit better than what Atlanta is right now. But then again, saying that, that means that probably Atlanta is not going to beat Monterey and that Sporting KC have to face Monterey, which is even a more daunting task than when they faced T Toluca. When they faced Toluca, it was a Toluca team that was in crisis. This Monterey team is not in crisis. This Monterey team is currently in second place and they are undefeated in Liga MX after nine games too. So... Yeah, but either way, that's pretty much it for the news of the week. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of these news. And as usual, if I forget any important news, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash that subscribe button. Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing the review for CCL because uh, in the first leg, there's only Tuesday and Wednesday games. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time.